Foliage. It's necessary in many types of video games, especially those with larger and outdoor worlds. It makes our games look more filled and more lively. Now, this plant is fake, but that's not important. What is important is that it looks real because you'll have to put fake plants that look real in your games. And your first instinct may be to drag in a static mesh and duplicate it and fill your play space with that static mesh. And that works fine and dandy, but there's one problem, draw calls. Draw calls are not inherently bad, but it's much more efficient for your graphics card to render one draw call with a million triangles rather than a million individual draw calls with one triangle each. Even though it's the same amount of work being done overall, uh, it's the million triangles being drawn, the one million draw calls can take significantly longer because your graphics card has to stop and wait for the next set of information, which is the next draw call, to be passed over from the CPU. So how do video game developers get around this? Well, we use the foliage tool built into Unreal Engine 4. The foliage tool allows you to place thousands of meshes into your level, and then it turns them all into a single large encompassing mesh, creating a single draw call. This doesn't fix everything, but it is the main reason why using the foliage tool is a great idea when creating your games. And today, we'll be covering how to use the foliage tool. All right, so to get started, we're gonna have to add some foliage static meshes to our project. I'm gonna go ahead and use this nature pack since it was free in I believe April of this year, but if you don't have it, you can go ahead and use the open world demo collection, which also comes with very high quality assets from Epic Games themselves. If you don't have it yet, head over to the marketplace, and, and this time I'm actually not making a joke. We're gonna go here, we're gonna go under free, and we're gonna get Epic Games content. On page number four, you'll go ahead and see all of this free stuff, but the open world demo collection is with all of the good foliage assets that we can use here. Go ahead and add it to your project, and we can go from there. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and use my nature pack. All right, so after we go ahead and add our pack to our project, under content, the main folder in your project in the content browser, we should have the new folder from the content that we added we can go ahead and go to meshes and just try to find something like flora wherever your bushes are and we can go ahead and start adding foliage to the world immediately we don't have to do really any sort of pre-planning or anything when we're using foliage it's really nice so let's go to modes click on foliage also there's a hotkey shift 3 in case you want to go ahead and pull it up at any time and in order to start placing foliage all around the world, first we have to go ahead and grab a static mesh. I'm just going to select a couple different types of grass and maybe some plants, some moss, and some of these. I'm actually not sure what they are. Some other flowers and maybe some trees just for a little variation. Once you have all of them selected that you may want, and you can always add more later. Go ahead and just drag all of them into the drop foliage here box. Now, if you're like me, it might take just a moment because I dropped 16 static meshes in all at once that I just added to my project. Might have to compile some shaders, etc. But now we have all of these different types of foliage that we can drop into our level. If you want to check to see if any of them are selected, just see if any of them are grayed out. If they're grayed out, that means they are currently not selected. Right now, all of mine are selected, so if I want to deselect some of them in the foliage, I just need to check this box and it'll gray itself out. Now, if I paint with my circle, nothing will happen with that uh, type of foliage. So let's go ahead and deselect all of them. A quick way to do that is just to click on your first one, shift, and click on the last one while you're still holding shift, and that'll select everything. Then you can go ahead and just deactivate all of them. And I'm just going to click on my one grass. And I'm going to go over here to my grass landscape and I can go ahead and change some parameters. Of course, with the size of my circle, I can go ahead and change that up here. If you're using 4.24, it would be up here on the top left, just like the landscape is. If you hover over the size, you should be able to grow and shrink your bubble. I'm just going to bring it to a small little capsule size. And we're going to go ahead and change a few details 
on our static mesh. So go ahead and click on that specific static mesh and we'll see that we have all of these options right here. And I'm going to go through a few of them just really quickly. So the first one that we have is the density. And that's pretty self-explanatory. If we change it all the way to the max and we left click, our bubble will completely fill up with grass. If we change it to all the way to zero and we left click, literally nothing will pop up. So that is the basics of density. If you want a specific answer on what density is, it is the amount here that will pop up in a thousand square units. So that's a thousand by one thousand square units. The radius is going to be the radius that one specific grass static mesh is going to be from another. So if we have a radius of five, then the closest that two grass static meshes will be is five world units apart. And it doesn't matter if I hold down, it doesn't matter what the density is, they're all going to stay five units apart. The next option we have is scaling. And scaling is pretty self-explanatory. What sizes do you want each of these static meshes to be? We can go ahead and change the max size, and since we have uniform scaling, the minimum is going to be 1, and the maximum is going to be around 4.5. So if we start clicking, we'll get random sizes in between those two numbers. They can be anything between them. But if you want to change different parameters on its scaling, you can change it to free and then change what you want it to scale on the X, Y, and Z individually. Or you can go ahead and constrain it to just two of the X scales. Next, we have placement settings. And this is pretty self-explanatory. With the Z offset, do you want it at zero, which would be directly on the ground? Or you can change it to a couple hundred so that some of them are up in the sky. I haven't really found a reason to use that option yet, but I'm sure it's in there for some reason. The next option is align to normal. So see how we have this ridge here that's almost at a 90 degree angle. This is asking if when we place some actors on here, do we want them to stay vertical going completely straight up or do we want them to basically align to this cliffside? And right now we have the box checked, so if we put some static meshes on there, you should see that they basically act as if they're on the cliff side, not going straight up anymore. They're going off at an angle. If we erase these and turn off that box, go ahead and change our size here, you'll see that now all of them will just go straight up instead of going along the cliff face. And you can set some constraints here with the max angle. Random yaw is going to ask you if you want them to randomly twist and turn. So they're spinning, but they're also still flush with the plane. They're spinning in the yaw direction. If you want them all completely uniform and having them face the same direction, then you just check that box off. But it's much more natural to go ahead and have that box checked on, and that's why it's checked on by default. You can also set a random pitch angle, which means that they'll go ahead and basically lay flat down. You can set the maximum angle here, and as soon as I start placing them, you'll see that they're no longer standing straight up. They're kind of going off along with the ground. Gravity is taking a toll on them, finally. The next one is really important. It's the ground slope angle minimum and maximum. By default, if I try to put some foliage on this cliff side, some of that cliffside is more than the default 45 degree angle. But if we change this to like 120 degrees, it'll be much easier to go ahead and paint along the cliffside. And we can change that so that the cliffside is not able to be painted on. We can do just a maximum of 20 degrees. So if you don't want any foliage on very high vertical drops, you can just change this ground slope angle down as much as you need. Next, we're going under the instance settings, and we're going to talk about cull distance. Luckily, we can go ahead and set each static mesh's cull distance here in this setting. This will save on performance since it'll start culling the static meshes once they're pretty far from our view. To go ahead and show you how it works, I'll go ahead and just add some grass into the level. And we'll change the maximum cull distance to something like, mm, like 2,000. So we have all of this grass in front of us, and we can see as we move further and further away and get closer to that maximum cull distance, the static meshes stop being rendered. And as we get closer and they get within that maximum radius, they start coming back and they start being rendered again. 
that's what the cold distance is for and it's really handy super useful to use for static meshes and foliage generally you do want your foliage to cast shadows otherwise it looks really weird since our sun isn't moving we don't need to cast dynamic shadows we'll go ahead and turn that off we'll cast a static shadow one thing that may come up if you have a lot of foliage inside of your level is that your light map resolution is too high. That's set in the actual static mesh itself. So if I go ahead and open up my grass, actually open up grass number one, and we go over to lighting, we'll see that our light map resolution is something low. It's Eight is actually a really small light map resolution, but your static meshes might have something higher, like 256. It's usually a multiple of two. If you ever need to change this light map resolution and you don't want to do it for the static mesh itself since maybe you have a larger static mesh somewhere else in the level, something like that, you can do it just to the foliage here in the details panel. We can go ahead and do light map resolution override and set it to whatever we want here. Once again, usually a multiple of two. We also have collision presets here where we can go ahead and have block all, overlap all, block all dynamic. Usually with grass you don't have to worry about collision. So I'm not going to do anything, but if you're using trees, you might want to come in here and change your collision for trees, maybe even bushes. So that's the basics for foliage. And remember that each of your static meshes can be customized here under their details panel just by clicking on them. And we can customize each of those parameters that we went over for each of these static meshes. One last tip that might come in handy is while you're painting, let's say you want to lower the density here instead of erasing just giant chunks. So you can go here to erase density and change the erase density leaving some behind. And it won't erase all of them since the erase density has been changed. If you want to erase everything in your bubble though, you can go ahead and just change it back down to zero. Foliage is pretty handy because not only can you erase foliage by holding shift and then left clicking, you also can just go here to the erase tool and then no matter what, if you left click, it'll erase. If you hold shift though, it'll just automatically switch temporarily to that erase tool. So that's really it for learning how to use the foliage tool. I know we've talked a lot about plants during this video, but really any type of static mesh can be used for this. You can even come in here and bring in some cubes, plug that in, start painting some cubes. Foliage is pretty versatile. In between videos, I'm going to work on my foliage, getting some trees in the area, but with what we've gone over, you should be able to do that yourself. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Honestly, I, I really appreciate it. It means a lot. I put a lot of effort into these videos, so if you learned something, please leave a like. Maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. It is free, and I would really appreciate it. Leave a comment on what you would want to see in the future for this series, and remember that I'm here to help you think like a game developer, so stick around for more videos like this.